Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake, and in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing Adobe Premiere Pro 2014. So this video follows the October release of Adobe CC 2014, and we're specifically talking about Premiere Pro today. I'm going to compare Adobe Premiere Pro 2014 to uh, Adobe CS6, and ultimately, for basic day-to-day -day video editing, like the kind of stuff that I do for YouTube all the time, there are marginal differences, there's overall tremendous differences between Creative Cloud 2014 and uh, Adobe CS6, but if you're just doing basic editing, it's not gonna be that huge of a difference and a gap for you. With other Adobe software, it's gonna be a tremendous gap, but not as much with Premiere Pro 2014 for now. The major improvements are in the Mercury Playback Engine, the supported updated video cards, um, overall playback performance, um, faster editing and scrubbing, some new features in terms of color grading and lumetri looks, as well as uh, some features if you happen to be working with Adobe After Effects as well in terms of the media linking. So those are all great benefits, but for the average video editor, they're not going to be huge overwhelming benefits. They're more for people who are doing a lot of video production or are doing um, or aspiring to do feature films, documentary stuff. I love that you can do uh, the blur out of faces directly in uh, Premiere Pro now. We have some new masking features with Premiere Pro. We have the ability to update and edit live type that's from After Effects. So that can be very good for motion graphics people, especially for lower thirds titles and things like that. So again, overall great improvements to the software. I'm very happy with it. But I don't think that for general purpose video editing, people are doing simple YouTube videos, simple marketing videos, that the huge overwhelming benefit is there. I think that the Creative Cloud membership has overwhelming benefits in general, but that's my take on it. And that's also because I'm in a business model where I don't ever see that Adobe bill between various methods of passive income, between the actual money that I make from video related ventures, YouTube and otherwise, it is negligible. 60 bucks, the equivalent of less than $2 a day when it comes down to it, like, okay, I could just quit drinking coffee or something. That's nothing to have access to this great industry level software. And you know, if people disagree with that, then in my mind, it's your hobbyist or you really just haven't found a way to monetize anything. And if that's your case, that's perfectly fine. And then maybe you don't need to be using Premiere Pro anyway. Maybe you need to be using Adobe Premiere Elements for your basic day-to-day -day video editing needs because that's going to be box software that you can buy for 75 bucks. And that's gonna give you most of the tools that you would use for basic video editing. Uh, you just won't get the overwhelming tremendous performance that you get from um, Premiere Pro. You won't get some of the color grading and effects options. You'll still be able to integrate with other Adobe programs if I'm not mistaken. So again, uh, that's where I would see that. It's like, if you're a hobbyist, then I don't know where you were coming up with the like thousand plus dollars for um, Adobe Premiere boxed anyway. So I don't know what the complaint there is with the subscription model, which is why I don't think a lot of video editors are actually the ones complaining. It was photographers and then they stopped after um, going one to Lightroom for most of their stuff and to the uh, new Photoshop photographer bundle for the rest at $9.99. Uh, I really wish there was like a video editors bundle for that because I know some people that that would help out. But, you know, I've managed to convince them of the value of the overall Creative Cloud membership uh, when I have those conversations. And I've also done that through trying to help them monetize their videos so they don't even see that bill either. But anyway, I digress on that. My point is, uh, this software is tremendous. It's aces. It's definitely worth the value. And I think that for 2015, that we're going to see a lot of improvements both in the spring and then the fall update that they're going to do for it that are gonna really add a lot more value to what Adobe Premiere Pro can do. I really feel like this is still leaps and bounds um, above uh, Final Cut Pro and other video editing software. Um, Avid is still competitive in my mind, but uh, really, I would say that CS6 is still viable, but I don't think that's gonna last. I think another year or two and CS6 is no longer gonna be viable for Premiere Pro. It's certainly not viable for After Effects considering that um, Cinema 4D Lite was integrated into After Effects. So if you're trying to do serious video editing and you're gonna include things like motion graphics or you're trying to increase your higher production values, then Premiere Pro CC 2014 is the way to go. 
if you're still chugging along just fine on CS6 and you don't feel that you're ever going to change your workflow, maybe you can get by with that for another year or two. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Like this video if you like it, don't forget to subscribe, ask me your questions in the comment section below, or tweet them to me at Roberto Blake. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today.